some rates of change problems deal with more than one variable. For example, in a cylinder, you're going to find that pi, uh, sorry, the volume is equal to pi r squared h, r and h are both variables, or the surface area of a cone is pi r l, and that's again gives you r and l are both variables. Or you might be dealing with, say, um, with similar triangles, and they might have something like this, and this h can move, and of course, as the h moves, the x moves as well. So, but they'd always give you, you'd have a similar triangle, so you could say in this case, that 4 over 3 is equal to h over x, that's just the property of similar triangles. And that means that h rearranging is equal to 4x over 3. And that means I can express my area of this little small triangle if I need to as being half the base by the height, which is half of x by 4x over 3. So that means I can get dA dx if I need to. So you're going to have to rearrange different variables, maybe in terms of another variable. Okay, and the same with the volume and areas up here as well. So um, the other thing that they give, they give you some... Um, they give you some information at the start of the question. So the volume of a sphere is increasing at 10 centimeters cubed per second. Well, the volume is increasing. That's going to give us that dv dt is equal to 10 and it's centimeters cubed. So they give me that dv dt. It's already given as part of the question. Find the rate of interest of increase of radius when r is equal to 3. What your job now is to find, what you need to find, is the rate of increase of radius. Well, the radius is dr and rate of increase is dt. So it's the, it's the, so with respect to time, see the rate of increase. So dr dt, that's what I'm looking for. And dr dt is equal to, I'm going to use the first bit, which is dv dt. And it's a multiply by, now at this stage, I need to construct what's the rest of this chain rule going to be. I know I need a dr at the top, because there's my dr here, and I don't have one on the right hand side. And I need to get rid of the dv. So look what's left. I've got dr dt. The dvs cancel each other out, if you like, and I'm left with dr dt. I have dv dt. That's equal to 10. I just need dr dv. Well, I know that volume of a sphere, the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So I get dv dr is equal to 3 multiplied by down is going to give me 4 pi r squared. But that's dv dr. I'm looking for dr dv, no problem. dr dv, I just get the reciprocal, is equal to 1 over 4 pi r squared. So now I have dr dv and I've got dv dt. So dr dt is equal to 10 times 1 over 4 pi r squared. That there is the rate of change of the radius at any time as this sphere is increasing. So the sphere is here, the little sphere, and it keeps growing and growing and growing. It's putting more and more air into it, it's getting bigger and bigger, wherever they're putting into it, um, we assume it's air, it's getting bigger and bigger. And therefore the radius is going to start, um, it's going to increase as well. And this is the rate of change of that radius, so 1 over uh, 10 multiplied by 1 over 4 pi r squared. If you want to find the rate of in radius uh, when, if you want to find the rate of increase of the radius when r is equal to 3, you just sub a 3 in for this r up here. Okay, let's have a look at another one. I'm not going to do this particular one, but example, a snowball melts in the sun, losing one centimeter cube per minute. Just to tell you that in this bit here, this is also a dv dt, that the rate of change of volume with respect to time is equal to minus one centimeter cube per minute. So dv dt. And then the rest of the question would ask you something about a snowball will be spherical. I might even say in the question a spherical snowball, but it will be spherical. And then you have what the formula for a, for a sphere is, and then you can use that in that question, probably in something similar way to, to this previous question. Let's have a look at this. We will have a look at this question. A 10 meter long ladder rests against the wall and the base slips out from the wall at 0 0.2 meters per second. Okay, and the question says, find the rate of change of the height of the ladder sliding on the wall when the base of the ladder is three meters from the wall. So here's my ladder, it's 10 meters long. It's sliding against the wall, it's against the wall, and it's sliding out at 0 0.2 meters per second. Okay, so I know that dx dt is equal to 0 0.2. I call it x, I could have called it s for distance, you know, but, so, but that's the rate of change because it's going out at two meters, or 0 0.2 meters per second. And they want to find the rate of, change of the height of the ladder. They're looking for dh dt. Now, this is an example of when we have two variables. Using Pythagoras theorem, this is this is this is 10. I let this be x. 
that means my height is equal to 10 squared, the square root of 10 squared minus x squared. So that means that dh dx, I can get dh dx now. So let's see that in action. Okay, so dh dx is equal, that's equal to 10 squared minus x squared to the power of a half. So it's equal to a half, 100 minus x squared to the power of minus a half by the derivative of the inside function, which is going to give me minus 2x. So that's what this is. That's going to give me, um, I've got a half multiplied by 1 over 100 minus x squared. That's the square root of that. Multiplied by, there, multiplied by minus 2x. That simplifies out to, okay. So we have our dh dx, and now I know I'm looking for dh dt because that's what they're looking for. Find the rate of change of the height. So what I've already got is I've, I have a dx dt. And actually, as it happens, I have a dh dx as well. So uh, dh dx, and my x's are going to cancel out. I'm going to be left with dh dt. And I want to find out what this rate of change is when the ladder is 3 meters from the wall. So dh dt is equal to dx dt, 0 0.2. And then dh dx is going to give me minus x divided by square root of 100 minus x squared. And I, they want to find out when this is 3 meters from the wall. So that's going to give me minus 0 0.2x. I can replace x, can't I, with 3 over the square root of 100 minus 9. That's just a calculation. And that is my rate of change of the height of the ladder as it slides down. And it's a specific rate of change when the uh, x is 3 meters from the wall. Okay, one more quick example. Right, so according to Boyle's law, for a given mass of gas at a fixed temperature, the pressure multiplied by the volume is equal to some constant. So if the pressure goes up, the volume goes down. If the pressure goes down, the volume goes up. So kind of the gas spreads out to fill the available space, and uh, it's equal to a constant. So it then tells you C is a constant that depends on the type of gas. In this case, we're told that V is equal to 100 and P is equal to 2. So find the value of the constant C. So a PV is equal to C. So PV is equal to C. P is equal to 2. And V is equal to 100. So that means C is equal to 200. And it's a constant. So that's the first bit. The second thing, if the pressure is decreasing at a rate of 0 0.01 atmospheres, so what's this? This is a partial derivative, we know that, and it's it's a fixed piece of information they've given us. Pressure is dp, dt, and it's decreasing at 0 minus 0 0.01. That's dp, dt. Find the rate at which the gas is expanding. Well, that's dv, so we're looking for dv dt when the volume is at such, such and such a rate. Well, I know I'm going to use dp dt. I have that. And what's the other variable I'm going to need? The other derivative I'm going to need is I need a dv and I need to get rid of the dp as well. Okay, so the dps are going to cancel out. I'm going to be left with dv dt. I happen to know that for a, in this case, of dp dt, let's one step at a time, dp dt is equal to this, minus 0 0.01. I have an equation with V and P in it. I have this PV is equal to C. So PV is equal to C. I'm looking for DV, B, DV, DP. So let V equal to C divided by P. That's equal to C, P minus 1. Where P is a variable. And I want to get DV. DV is equal to minus C, P minus 2. Which is equal to minus C over P squared. That's DV, DP. So there we go. You stick that in here minus c over p squared. So I've got is equal to plus 0 0.01 c over p squared. Okay, and they want to find it when the volume, is, now c of course, I can replace c, can't I, with 200, because I've got that. So I'll put c in as being 200. And p squared, so I want to find out what p squared is, um, but how do I find p squared? Well, I know Look at this equation here, PV is equal to C. So PV is equal to C, PV is equal to 200, we've got that. I'm looking for P squared, so V, P is equal to 200 divided by V, and they want to know 
find the rate at which the gas is expanding when volume is 125. So in order for my volume to be 125 centimeters cubed, my P is going to be equal to 200 divided by 125. So again, dV dt, continue back down in the same color, dV dt is equal to 0 0.01 by 200 divided by p squared, which is going to give me 200 divided by 125 to be squared. And that's the answer to that one. So you can see there was rearranging a variable to get to, to express one in terms of another. So it was getting the initial um, partial derivative that was constant, dp dt, is equal to minus 0.01, and then follow it through. So I hope that helped.